Hey guys, I just wanted to let my viewers know that I recently self-published a couple books that I wrote a while back. Uh, I finally decided to put them up. And if you guys enjoy my videos or you want to support me in some way, it would be really helpful if you checked my books out. Um, if you like epic fantasy, you may find the books enjoyable. If not, you can still check them out if you want to support me. Anyway, thank you guys all for watching my videos and let's get into this video. Why get construction up? You may want to get it up for quests. There are a few key quests like Fremi Isles, uh, Making Friends with My Arm, Dragon Slayer 2, and Song of the Elves. All of them require a construction level. You may also want to get your construction up to complete achievement diaries. The diaries require anywhere from 16 up to 78 construction. And then alongside those things, construction is one of the most beneficial skills to get up in the game because there's actually a ton of in-game benefits that you receive from getting your construction up. Unlike many skills where you just make tradable items that don't actually benefit your account because you can just buy them, construction is one of the few skills where when you get it up, you gain the ability to own certain objects that you can only own with the level requirement. One of the biggest things is the rejuvenation pools. They require anywhere from 65 to 90 construction and you can boost to make them. A different level of pools give different benefits, but they all restore special attack. And then as you go up, they also restore energy, HP, uh, cure venom and poison and restore your stats. Inside your house, you can also build a fairy ring and a spirit tree and you can combine them together, which gives a really quick way to access those two things. The jewelry box is also extremely helpful. It gives you infinite teleports for pretty much most jewelry in the game. Different levels of the jewelry box have different teleports uh, unlocked. Another extremely useful thing that you can unlock is the spellbook altars that allow you to switch between different magical spellbooks. You can make a wilderness obelisk which teleports you to the obelisks in the wilderness. So this is a really quick way to get up into the wilderness. You can create a costume room where you can store tons of different items, saving you tons of bank space. You can build a portal room where you can build teleport portals. So this, along with the jewelry box, unlocks tons of teleports around the game. You can create a study where you can make teleport tablets and you can build a telescope in there that helps you with the shooting stars activity. You can build a chapel where you can restore your prayer points if you don't have the level for the rejuvenation pool. Also, you can make a gilded altar, which is one of the best ways to train prayer. You can build a workshop where you are able to fix armor for a cheaper cost than if you were to take it to Bob. And finally, there is a combat room where you can build a dummy uh, that shows you your max hit, as well as you can build a ring where you can uh, fight your friends. Construction equipment. So in order to do construction, really all you need is a saw, a hammer. When you're low level, you need nails and regular planks. And as you get to be higher level, you can make stuff with oak planks and better planks, in which case you don't need nails. That is really all that is necessary, but there are some other items I'm going to talk about. So first off, we have the Carpenter's Out. This gives an XP boost while getting construction XP. So when you have the complete set, it is a 2.5% XP boost. You get that from doing Mahogany Homes activity. Next is the Plank Sack. You also get this from Mahogany Homes. And what this does is it allows you to store up to 28 planks. 28 in total, but you can store any type of plank. Next is Amy Saw. This is also obtained from Mahogany Homes. And this is a wieldable saw. That is essentially it. So it saves you one inventory space. Then there are a couple items that relate to changing the decoration of your personal house. So there is the Hosidius style, which you get from Mahogany Homes. And then there is the Twisted style, which you can buy on the Grand Exchange. Or if you ever get League points, you, you can purchase it with League points. The other home styles don't relate to an item. They are just unlocked. Once you get to a certain level, you can talk to a construction tutor and change them by paying him some money. Next is the Crystal Saw. When you use this saw, it gives you a plus three construction level boost, which does allow you to make things that are three levels above your level. The Crystal Saw is obtained from completing Eyes of Gloth request, and the saw does degrade. It comes with 28 charges, or 56 if you've completed the, if you've completed the Medium Western Province Diary. 
it can be recharged for free. So it is, so it's not a big deal if you run out of charges, but you don't really want to train with this because you'd be leaving your house frequently and that would lose you XP. Construction mechanics. Construction primarily involves building and destroying objects within your player owned house instance. Your Po instance can be reached by entering a house portal. House portals are spread out around the game within various locations. Your house can only be set to one of the portal locations at a time. It can also be reached by casting the teleport to house spell in the normal spellbook. Materials are used and you gain XP when building objects. Destroying them is done freely. Uh, the reason for destroying objects you've built is because there are limited build spots and things can only, only be built if nothing has been built in that build spot. Useful tips for construction. Uh, first, you can move your house, uh, you can redecorate your house, and you can buy your very first house to start construction at various construction agents that are around the game. There's one in Varrock, there's one in Sears Village, there's one in Fally, and their house will have a little construction agent icon on it. Before you have a butler, uh, you can use a very useful method to bank. At the Remington portal, you just run south to the general store with noted planks in your inventory and cash. You use your noted planks on the general store person and they will unnote your planks for you for a small fee. So you just unnote noted planks there, run back to the portal, go back to your house. That way you don't have to teleport um, and you can uh, unnote your planks very quickly. The next tip is once you get to a higher level, you can start using servants. They really aren't too useful until you get to about level 40 where you can hire the butler and level 50 where you can hire the demon butler and you always wanna have the best butler possible. You can hire them um, at a building at the northern end of East Artie. In order to hire a servant, you need to have two bedrooms and both bedrooms need to have a bed in it. The next tip is the servant's money bag. This can be built with 58 construction and you can store coins in there and your servant will automatically take their pay from that bag, uh, which means you don't have to go through extra dialogue to pay them, which saves you time. It can be built in the bedroom. And the next tip is the bell pole. This can be built in the dining room. And what this allows you to do is uh, call your servant to anywhere in your house. So if you need to send your butler to get planks or whatever, and they're somewhere in the house, you don't know where, if you have a bell pole, um, it allows you to just automatically call them right to you. You can call them by actually pulling the bell pull or in your house options, there is a call servant option. The level route. So starting out construction, the most efficient way of all to start out with as usual is quests. So you can go from level one to level eight doing daddy's home mini quest. Then you can go from level eight to 10 doing eyes of Glaffrey and level 10 to 14 doing Tower of Life. There are more quests that offer construction XP, but most of them are pretty high level quests, so I didn't list them here as quests to get up your early levels. So we're gonna go from level one to level 99 construction and what routes there are and what you should take. So at level one, you can either do beginner homes, bagged plant one, or wooden chairs. So I've listed here their XP per hour, and their GP per XP. Beginner Homes assumes that you have all the teleports needed for Mahogany Homes. If you don't have all the teleports that you need and you're actually like walking very long distances, then it's definitely gonna take a huge hit to the XP per hour. So Bag Plants is another option if you don't have all the teleports for that. It is a lot more expensive, but it is pretty good XP. Level four, you unlock the wooden bookcase, so that's a bit better option if you're just going the regular plank route. Uh, level six, you unlock the bagged plant two, which becomes the best XP method that you have available, but it's quite expensive. Level nine, you unlock the wooden larder, so that's a bit of an upgrade if you're using the plank method to get your construction up. Level 12, you unlock the bagged plant three, which is once again, the best XP method at this point. Level 15, you unlock repair benches, which are the first oak object that you can make. It's by far the fastest XP, um, and it isn't too expensive. 
Level 16, you unlock Crafting Table 1, which is once again a bit faster XP than the repair benches. The Novice Homes, which are actually pretty good XP and very cheap to do. Level 31, you unlock Carved Oak Tables, a bit of an XP buff to the Plank Method. Level 33, you unlock Oak Larders, and these are quite fast, up to 450k XP per hour. Level 50, you unlock the Myths Cape and the Adept Homes options. Myths Capes requires Dragon Slayer 2 to be done. So once again, each of these has their strong suit. Uh, the Oak Larders are the most expensive, but they are the quickest. Adept Homes are the slowest, but they are also the cheapest. Level 52, you unlock Mahogany Tables, which is a huge XP increase, but it's also a lot more expensive. 66, you unlock Teak Benches which are a bit more expensive than oak stuff, but a pretty big XP buff. Level 70, you unlock Expert Homes, so another XP increase to Mahogany Homes, um, and it's still quite cheap. Level 74, you unlock the Oak Dungeon Doors, so that is the new best oak plank training method. And level 77, you unlock Gnome Benches, which are the best Mahogany Plank training method and the fastest XP method in the game that is actually viable to do. So those are kind of all the viable methods at each level point. Um, you can kind of choose to do what you want to do depending on whether you want to spend more or if you want to save money and get a little bit slower XP. So analysis, uh, first up we have a graph of the XP rates for each method. The gnome benches are the fastest method and the mahogany tables are second. Of course, both of those use mahogany planks. The next graph is the approximate GP required to get 99 construction with each method. So of course, the higher it is on here, the more it costs. So the mahogany is the most expensive. Teak bench is second. Uh, then we have oak stuff coming in third. Then the myth cape is slightly cheaper than the oak stuff. And then finally, the mahogany homes is the cheapest way to do it. Second graph what we have is the time it takes to get 1 million construction XP. This counts the time to actually get the XP and the time to make the money required to get the XP. In parentheses, we have the assumed rate that you make money. So for this first graph, it's assumed that you make money at 1 mil per hour. And so lower is better on these graphs. So for this first graph where you make 1 mil an hour, the adept homes are the fastest way to get your construction up. The next graph we have is uh, the time it takes to get 1 million XP if you can make 3 mil per hour. Teak benches just barely win, coming in at 4.45, whereas the myth cape was 4.56. And then finally, if you can make 5 mil GP per hour, teak bench is still the winner. If you have alts to make you money or you count money as zero time, then of course the quickest method would be the best, which is the gnome benches. Next, we're going to talk about Mahogany Homes. So for this, you're going to be teleporting around the game quite a bit. Uh, so the main areas are Ardi, Fali, Zaya, and Varrock. So the Diary Cape is really useful for Ardi. Uh, the teleport option is one. Um, you can also just use the regular Ardi teleport. And for the most efficient way, you actually are going to use both of those. For Fali, the best teleport option is the Ring of Wealth. And it's the third option on the teleports. Uh, you can also use the skills necklace and it's the second option on those teleports or you can always just use the regular Fally teleport although that is the worst option when going to zaya there's two main areas in zaya you're going to go to the best teleports to get to them are the xerix talisman to teleport to the glade and the house teleport with your house in hosidius it is best to have both of those if you only have one then that is doable you definitely want to try and have both though for the Varrock areas, uh, the Diary Cape Teleport D is really helpful, though you can just use a regular Varrock Teleport if you don't have the Diary Cape. So when doing Mahogany Homes, you have to get contracts, and the best way to get a contract is to use NPC Contact. If you don't have Lunars and, and NPC Contact, the next best option is to use the Ring of Wealth, teleport to Fally, and speak to the construction agent that way. And then the worst option is just to teleport straight to Fowley with the normal spellbook option and run down to the construction agent. So for the equipment that you're going to want, you're going to want a rune pouch with three of the required runes for whichever teleport options that you're picking or if you're using NPC contact. Use the best staves and tome 
that aid in covering the rune costs that you're going to have depending on whichever teleports you're using. Then a plank sack is extremely helpful, If so if you have that, definitely use it. Then you're going to want to either wear carpenters if you have that. If you don't have that, then just wear the best weight reducing gear that you have, so graceful, or if you don't have graceful, then things like boots of lightness and spottier cape. So training construction with mahogany homes is pretty simple. You go to a contractor, speak to the contractor, you can pick to take either beginner, novice, adept, or expert contracts. The different level of contract will require a different will require a different level of planks. The higher ones will give more XP and more points. So once you get your contract, there's going to be some house somewhere in the game that you have to go to and fix up their house. So you have to rebuild chairs, beds, uh, just various stuff inside the house. I will go ahead and show a map picture of each location that you can go to right now on screen. If this isn't enough, you can always go to the wiki and they will also have a description and a picture of where each location is at. Once you get to the house, there is going to be red marking around most of the things that you have to repair. A few things won't have red marking, just right click on stuff until you see a repair or fix or build option. Sometimes you do have to go up the stairs and down the stairs to find everything. Once you've built everything that you need to in the house, there will be a green message that pops up in your down in your chat box that will say that the person is happy with your work. After that, you want to speak to the person in the house that has the same name as the name that was assigned to you when you got the contract. They will give you some construction XP and that is the contract finished. If you keep going through the dialogue with them, it will give you an option to have some tea and that will restore your run energy. I recommend doing that rather than using staminas. And after that, you just want to get another contract. So if you're using NPC contact, you just use that spell, get a new contract from Amy. If you're not using the spell, then just teleport to where the contractor is at and speak to them just like you got your first one. And you just repeat that process over and over. Also, if you're using the Runelite client, there are some pretty helpful plugins that help with Mahogany Homes. So you just want to go to your configuration options. You want to search for Mahogany Homes and turn on that option. That will give you an arrow pointing to the house that you need to go to if you're in the area. And it will highlight every single object that you need to fix. And it will give you an arrow pointing to the person that you need to speak to afterwards. Up next is garden benches. So these are located in the superior garden, which requires 65 construction. The teak garden bench requires 66 construction. The gnome bench, which uses mahogany planks, that requires 77 construction. So the items required are a saw, hammer, noted planks, a demon butler, and cash either in the inventory or in the servant's money bag. The theoretical tick perfect XP rates are for teak planks 781k XP per hour and for mahogany planks uh, 12 15k XP per hour. You won't get those XP rates though if you are very good and very focused, um, drop maybe like around 10% off those rates. So for teak, you're looking at somewhere around 700k and for mahogany, somewhere around 1 to 1.1 mil per hour. That is if you are very focused and also very good at the method. Of course, if you're not focused or you have high latency and you lag or you're just not used to the method, then you're gonna be getting even worse XP rates. So I would say that these are probably the hardest method in construction. You have to be tick perfect for this to work um, well. And there are a lot of clicks, uh, much more than really any other construction method. Here I laid out a table of the of each tick during the cycle and what is happening, what you should be doing. One cycle is 10.2 seconds. So how this is done, first is you destroy one of the benches, destroy the second one and take the planks at the same time or the same tick. Uh, then you send the butler off, you open the build interface and build the bench that will take three ticks to complete all of the build there. Uh, then you build the second bench, which once again, that takes another three ticks. Then you destroy both the benches. Uh, it takes one tick per bench. You rebuild both benches again, and that is one full cycle. The demon butler will spawn. If you do this correctly, the demon butler should spawn when you're opening the interface to build the second bench on the second time you're building them. And because he spawns while you're in the interface, he won't interrupt you and he'll just stand next to you. If you do this incorrectly and he interrupts you, that can waste a tick. So you want to try and avoid that if possible. You want to have the demon butler bring 24 planks. He can bring 26, but 26 kind of messes up the flow 
and the cycle. So have him bring 24 at a time. This is very hard to do tick perfectly for long periods of time. So if you're not quite getting it right away, that's okay. Just keep practicing and hopefully you will get it. Myth's Cape. So for this method, uh, it's located in the quest hall. It requires 47 construction and Dragon Slayer 2. The items required are a saw, hammer, teak planks, demon butler, and a mythical cape. XP rate is up to 430k XP per hour. So there isn't really anything special or I need to explain for this method. You build it, you remove it, you build it, remove it. Send your butler off to get planks when you're low. One thing of note is that you don't want to have your butler fill your inventory when there is a object built because when you try to remove the cape rack thing that you're building you need an inventory spot for your myths cape because you will get your cape back each time so you have to pay attention to that either make sure your butler isn't going to bring back enough to fill your inventory or make sure that you have an interface open when your butler spawns so that he doesn't just automatically give you the planks you got to make sure you do something so that you will have inventory space to remove the object. Next up is mahogany tables. So for this method, it's fairly simple as well. Uh, it's located in the dining room. It requires 52 construction. The items required are saw, hammer, mahogany planks, a demon butler. You need cash either in your inventory or in your servant's money bag. Uh, the XP rate is up to 925k XP per hour. So here is a tick table off of the wiki that you can try and follow if you want. Really, for this method, it's pretty simple. All you really need to think about is you need to build three tables and remove two tables while the butler is gone. The butler should come back while you're in the middle of the third build. And then while the butler is there next to you, you want to, um, you're gonna do two removes and a build in between those two removes. So in total, you're building four tables and removing four tables for each cycle. So for example, let's say you're starting out a cycle, you send the butler off to get 24 planks, you build a table, you remove a table, you build a second table, you remove that table, you build a third table, and that's when the butler should come back. You remove that third table, you build a fourth table, remove the fourth table, take the planks from the butler, send the butler off again, and that is one cycle, and you just repeat that over and over. So, oak larders. Uh, this is located in the kitchen. It requires 33 construction. The items required are a saw, hammer, oak planks, cash in the inventory or the servant's money bag, and the XP rate is up to 450k XP per hour. So for this, you're gonna send the servant off to get 24 planks. Uh, you're gonna build, you're gonna try and build three larders while the butler's gone. The butler should come back while you're building the third. You're gonna remove that third, and then you're gonna send the butler off again, and that's one cycle for the lard, larders. Oak Dungeon Doors. So this is located in the dungeon. It requires level 74 construction. Uh, you're gonna need a saw, hammer, oak planks, cash either in the inventory or the servant's money bag, and the XP rate is up to 500k XP per hour. And for this, as you guys can see in the clip, uh, you can set up your camera and your screen in a way where you don't have to move your mouse while building. Uh, you will still have to move it to talk to the butler. Also, if you stand in the position that I'm standing in in this sort of room layout, the butler will always spawn right next to you if the door is built. So what you wanna do for this is you wanna send the butler off while the door is built. You're gonna remove the door, build a door, remove it, build another door, and then wait for the butler to spawn. And then just repeat that cycle over and over. 